morning. It's not too loud. It's yeah. Too loud. We can hear you. Well, I can too. Is it? That's what it's really loud in my ears. Okay. okay. I'm, I hear it loud, very loud. So, just so you all can hear and not echoing. Are we doing okay? Can we turn it down a little bit, Jeff? Jeff? We'll see. Oh. I forget where the controls are. Sorry. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to help we get this regulated. It's always interesting. I wonder if I could do it without it. It doesn't pick up. Okay. Okay. So, welcome to our September Seniors Living Smarter seminar. And, um, and a lot of you know, education was my first background, my first career, rather. And so to me, September is always a special time of the year. It's a new year. We're beginning. And uh, this year, I think September, the beginning of September complicated things for some of us because truthfully, I consider Labor Day the beginning of September. And but because it came in on the last Thursday, it made this seminar come up really quickly in September. So some of us are still spinning. And uh, speaking of things spinning, I think the postcards are spinning in the postal system. Um, we've gotten them in, and sometimes we just have those challenges. So when you get home, probably today, and see the, the postcard about this great seminar coming up. Give yourself a pat on the back. I've already been there. I was a mind reader. I went and, uh, sorry about that. It is not Brielle's fault. I wanted to hear that. Anyway, so we, but people know when our seminars are, so we just go right ahead. Um, again, I want to welcome you. And as uh, I am Virginia Lays and me, if I haven't had a chance to meet you, I'm a certified senior housing professional and realtor. Some people say, well, do you not do real estate anymore? Do you just do the seminars? Heads up, people. I am a realtor. I am a downsizing coach. I love the seminars. They're a great service to the community. But when you have real estate needs, you know, I'm, I'm there for that as well. Did you all have a question? I saw I thought, oh. No, I was asking my friend if she had an extra pen. Oh, <laughs> That's all I need a pen. we'll find a pen for you. <laughs> we, <laughs> here, oh, you got oh, one. Okay. Thank all right. you. You're not the first one. I had the same problem. <laughs> but did you get a pen, David? Yes, I did. I got it from the Navy person over here. Okay. We, it, very good. We're out to help people in any way we can, so that's great. Um, all right, I want to um, briefly, well, back to the seminars. It's a service we offer and very committed to people having information. So we say the purpose of our seminars is to educate, equip, and inspire seniors to make informed choices and empower decisions. It's all about information and being prepared. And it's what many of our topics are. Today's topic for sure is about being prepared. And so you'll be hearing a lot about that. Uh, but I want to take a minute, go back last month when we talked about live an active life. What are you doing to make the third act of your life special and live life to its fullest? And we told you we would be asking this month. So did any of you do follow-up uh, action steps, perhaps registering for senior university, uh, doing any of the, uh, I love the online travel opportunities or sign up for some of the need even online classes for yoga, go to Silver Sneakers Live, lots of opportunities. I saw a hand back there, I think, did you have your hand up that you? Oh yeah, I just did some of your homework, that's all. Okay, what, what was something you did? Uh, well, I joined senior university and teaching nine classes. Whoa. <laughs> I'm glad you could fit us in your schedule today. All right, so if anybody wants to know more about senior, I'm, I'm responding to these signals in the back. Uh, if anybody wants to know more about senior university, as from the students, have any of your classes started yet? Okay. 
Oh, okay. But she signed up nine. Anybody signed up for, for more than nine? Mary, what did you do? You signed up for three, four? Two plus one waiting. Okay. Uh, so that tells us you need to sign up early because you may be on a waiting list. Yay. Anybody else take any action steps? Yes. Silver sneakers. Okay. Good. And we have a lot of silver sneakers people here. So that's great. So we're all off to live healthy lives, and that's wonderful. Um, let's see. Okay, so today's topic, as I've already mentioned, is really on that theme of being prepared. Uh, oops, forgot to introduce our educational partners. Time out for that. Okay, so we're going to introduce our speakers and our panelists in a moment, but our educational partners who are committed to really provide education to seniors. We have with us today uh, Christy Bryant from Wesleyan Homes. You know, they have independent living, assisted memory care, home health, hospice, a wide, wide range of services. So check out information from Christy. We have Stacey Scarborough from Visiting Angels. Um, for those of you who want to be prepared with home care needs, you know, there's so many, so much misinformation that folks are in. Oh, you have to sign up for a minimum of hours, a long-term contract. Go get the facts. Go, you know, go, go by the hearsay. Stacy's great to provide information. Uh, and then our other sponsor, we have Laura Lowen, who uh, works with me, is at our table. My Seniors Living Smarter Services is our downsizing business that supports the real estate. It's the comprehensive move management, liquidation, property prep, looking for communities. So Laura can answer some questions uh, for you about that. Okay, we thank you, the sponsors, very, our educational partners very much. And it was so much fun looking around a while ago, people working to get your notebooks up to date. So if you are new, I hope new, I know we have at least a couple who are new, you got your binder for the first time today, and then each month when you return, you will get the updated uh, handouts for that particular month. And so Brielle assembles them very nicely in a little packet here. Take them out already. Yeah. Oh, this one's not three-hole punch, but it stays in there. The rest of them are three-hole punch ready to slip into your binder. We'll be talking about these in our... Uh, seminar today, referring to some of them, so they're great resources. You'll also find on the first page there, um, welcome, and I was introducing our uh, presenters today, and then action steps that we'll take, talk more about at the end. But as I always remind people, our format is I will be interviewing and talking with our panelists and sharing the information that way. And then we will open it up for questions from our attendees today. So when you have a burning question, and believe me, there are some of these that may be, <gasps> instead of speaking out or even raising your hand, put that pen you just got from your neighbor uh, in your hand and you write down your question. So when you have the questions at the end, you'll have it. Sometimes we find out those questions get answered along the way. But uh, that's what we like to do. And then we will talk about action steps. And the yellow sheet is for you to leave. There'll be a basket at the table where you've got your water and your handouts, uh, giving us some information about you, how you found out about the seminar. And then uh, on the back side, if you would like for us to go ahead and register you for October, that's on there. Um, and Seniors Downsizing Club, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. And if you would like a consultation, someone just told me this morning, she's, you know, I, I really ready to do this. I need to learn more about this type of community which fits for this person. And can you come, can you come help me plan for this? That's what we're here to do. So if you need help along those lines, please contact us or fill out your feedback sheet. Okay. So. All right, so back to our theme. Um, before the healthcare crisis occurs, you had the benefits you really need. Now, I know that we all, no, nothing, I'm never going to face a healthcare crisis. 
And I hope you don't, and I hope no one in your family does, but some of us learn that that does happen. Um, and so we, we don't know what might happen, you know, but we can, in terms of being prepared, know what benefits we have and make sure we have a good understanding. You're going to, our, you are already receiving lots of mailers about, you know, is Medicare on the time, you know, and we can help you. Just always be careful. We've got two great people today for you to meet. But we're not here just to sell what their business is about their work I and mean, offer their products they can offer, but to make sure you have information. And that's what we, we are just so committed to. Um, so I'm going to ask our panelists to come on up. So we have Steve Dukovic, he will introduce himself. And I always forget, is it Dukovic or Dukovic? Okay, Dukovic. All right, good. And we have Bobby Coates. So we'll let you all go ahead and have a seat. And I'm going to let you do your elevator speech introductions. Let us know why you are here related to this topic this morning. Uh, so my name is Bobby Coates. I'm with a company called the Texas Medicare Shop. We're Hold your mic up. We're located right off Williams Drive. Is it on? Is that better? Hello. There you go. Swallow it. So we're with, with the Texas Medicare shop. We're located right on Williams Drive next to the Goodwill and the Social Security office. Uh, we specialize in solely Medicare, Medicare supplements, advantage plans, Part D drug plans. I've been doing this since 2015. Um, I got into it when my mom turned 65. Uh, she was very confused. I did all the research, met this great guy that taught me a bunch of stuff. And next thing you know, I was doing the same thing. <laughs> so okay. that's my story. All right, thanks, Steve. So I'm Steve Jakovic. Um, if you guys have been coming here for a while, you've probably seen me once or twice. And you get to hear more dad stories today because I got more. Um, but I also play in the Medicare space. However, I tend to have more of a long-term care focus. So Virginia frequently has me talking about how long-term care interacts and plays with the various programs out there like Medicare and Medicaid and that sort of thing. So I will probably be focusing much more on the interaction between like skilled nursing and Medicare and the um, rehab hospitals and that sort of thing today. Uh, but yeah, glad to be back. Good to see all y'all. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, well, thank you all for being here. Okay, now I have a feeling that many of us are already on Medicare uh, or whatever version we're on. Uh, some, well, I saw a couple of names, so I don't see them here that they are in the planning stages, but just in case, you know, we, we're just going to start with the beginning. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to do a quick overview. So with Medicare, uh, we have two main ways for the coverage. Original Medicare, which is the fee-for-service health plan. It has two parts, Part A for ho uh, hospital insurance, Part B, medical insurance. You pay your deductible, and after that, um, you have your Medicare coverage, and you can have a separate uh, drug prescription coverage, and these guys will be explaining more details about that. That's Medicare, our original Medicare. Now, as part of offering, well, Medicare Advantage is a Medicare health plan uh, offered by private companies, and they contract with Medicare. I still don't have any idea how many medical or Medicare Advantage plans are, but, you know, and some of us, truthfully, I was always confused when I would hear the advertisements and even looking online, enter your zip code to know what Medicare Advantage plans are available. Well, in our case, our Medicare Advantage plan was part of the benefits package from insurance, I mean, from retirement. So we, <laughs> it's like, oh, that's right. So some of you may, you know, it may be part of your benefits package. Some of you have researched what's available in our area. So we're going to be learning more about that today. Um, so let's dive into, let's start with Bobby on this one. Um, tell us, what's the difference between original Medicare and Medicare Advantage? We don't need the two-hour, you know, but the difference. So the, the big difference is when you have original Medicare, Medicare is your primary insurance company. 
when Medicare is your primary insurance company, you have access to the Medicare network. You're allowed to go see any doctor you want anywhere in the country, as long as they take Medicare, 95% of doctors accept Medicare. You don't need referrals to go see a specialist. If you want to go see a knee doctor in Oklahoma, you simply call them up, ask them if they take Medicare. If they do, you're covered. That's how Medicare works. Medicare is going to cover you pretty much for 80% of any medical treatment. Now with Medicare, you're going to want to look at a Medicare supplement plan because there's no limit to that 20%. The other way you can do Medicare, as Virginia pointed out, is a Medicare Advantage plan. When you go on a Medicare Advantage plan, you are no longer on Medicare. You are with that private insurance company, and that private insurance company is allowed to tell you the doctors you can see, the hospitals you can go to, and what's covered. The nice thing about Advantage plans is you don't have to pay for a supplement, and a lot of times you get extra benefits like dental, vision, and hearing. So that's the big difference between the two, and it's just a matter of your comfort level, what you find most important for your health insurance. Okay. Steve, you want to add anything? Um, yeah, I mean, he, he pretty much nailed it. One of the, the standard things that I've said for years is that if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, you're not paying up front. But when it comes time to use it, you are paying. And sometimes you're paying through the nose. Um, with a Medicare supplement, like you said, you've got freedom of choice. You can see pretty much whoever you want. And yeah, you're paying up front, but when the proverbial poo hits the proverbial fan, um, you're not worried about, okay, I've got to write a check for $2,000 here and $4,000 here and another $7,000 over here, which I've seen. So yeah, um, pay now, pay later. So what we're wanting you to do today, we want to share with you information. All of these have their place. It's knowing where you are, your anticipated circumstances, needs, and what fits best. And then we have professionals to help guide us. Okay, now, you've touched on this. Um, any other differences you want to point out between Medicare and Medicare Advantage? Or do you think we've covered that for general right now? There, there is one thing that I'd like to point out because it's something that I've noticed in this group. Many of you, have, like Virginia actually, have some form of insurance through a retirement plan. And so my wife works for the IRS, don't hold it against me. Um, <laughs> but when you talk about people that are coming out of the federal system, they have options that nobody except for federal employees have. Those options are typically pretty good. Um, so, you know, again, as a general rule, people of federal retirement, your Medicare doesn't work work quite like everybody else's because, you know, the Medicare part does, but the secondary doesn't work quite like what you would expect with either Advantage or with a supplement. Um, the other option that's out there is a group Medicare Advantage plan. And I know for a fact that at least some of y'all are on a group Medicare Advantage plan. Any retired teacher that's in here, if you are on the teacher retirement system, health insurance, that is a Medicare Advantage plan. I want to point out one really critical thing. That group medical retirement plan is not the same as the Medicare Advantage that's publicly available. As a general rule, it's substantially better because those retirement people or the, the, the companies, you know, whatever organization it is, whether it's the state, teacher retirement system, whatever, they are paying extra money for you to be a part of that plan. And I believe this year, the state of Texas is paying $638 per person per month for their people's Medicare Advantage plan, which is one of the reasons it's really, really, really good. So again, just, just to make sure you're aware, a group Medicare Advantage plan, even though it looks and smells like a regular Advantage plan, it is way different on the inside. Okay. No, he's exactly right, just like in the situation you told me you're in Virginia, a group advantage plan is going to have some stronger benefits, but again, you're still not on Medicare. That advantage plan is your primary insurance. Okay. So another message I hope you take away today is your neighbor may be on the very same thing we think, but they may not really be. So, you know, go to, go to someone who knows 
But we know that the you know grapevine, gossip line stuff, but sometimes we have misinformation. So check it out with the authorities or the professionals. All right. Um, okay. Well, let's, again, these kind of overlap. I'm going to try one more before I do some sharing. So how, speaking of what we've been saying, how do we know what's best? I'm going to start with Bobby. So about how do we decide, is Medicare best for me, or is a Medicare Advantage plan the best? Well, the, the approach we take is we're just going to educate you. We're going to show you the difference. We're going to show you what a Medicare looks like with a supplement. We're going to show you what an Advantage plan looks like. But again, with any insurance, with life insurance, term life when you purchased it back when you were 30, uh, you know, insurance on your house, everything's a gamble. Um, just like Steve pointed out, with the Medicare supplement, you're paying ahead of time. So you could go your whole life paying ahead of time, never get sick, and you paid all that money for nothing. The flip side is you could be on an advantage plan, you're not paying, you know, you're not paying up front, you're gonna pay as it happens, but then you can end up paying and paying and paying and paying and paying. So when you sit down and look at it, it's gonna be a decision you need to make based on your risk tolerance, because that's what this is all about. Insurance is about risk. And so that's what it's gonna boil down to. As you said, it makes me think about if you're talking to your financial person and you're looking at your investments, you know, it's like, well, are you a risk taker? Or do you want to have a more conservative approach? And I think I see overlap here. Again, you are in control, and we want to encourage you to make educated decisions. Is that a fair? Okay. All right, so we've been talking about planning for, and you're getting the information. But today, I want to advance the discussion to not just planning for you know, our health care coverage. But what happens where, when we're in the midst of it? What happens when we probably have a crisis occur and we're having to make sense of this? How does it all check out? So, Bob, uh, one of the way they both did, the Bob alluded to it. So I want to share um, our family experience uh, recently. Um, and again, this is just our story. But it's important when we hear stories, sometimes it may cause us to think about, oh, maybe I need to consider this. So that's what I, I hope to do this. Um, so moving forward, um, as I said, moving from talking about planning for to being in the midst of a healthcare crisis. Uh, we could review the literature. We could bring you all kinds of hypothetical situations. But somehow story is really important. And since we just had this encounter, <laughs> let me just say this topic has changed a lot from when we planned it last fall, even as we were talking about it um, earlier this spring. But you'll hear why I have a different uh, commitment to being informed about this. Um, many of you have seen my husband. He's not here today. He hoped to come, but you'll, I'll explain why in a minute. But anyway, so he does know I'm sharing his story, so it's, it's okay. Um, Don has struggled for many years with back pain. He had major fusion surgery 45 years ago or so, and you know things have changed since then. And, and he's been walking more stooped, but remains very active. And yes, he turned 90 in April. But, and I love it when, especially when we were in the hospitals, which you'll hear about, oh, well, before he came to the hospital, was he up and about? Could he dress himself? Yeah, he was driving our tractor mower around. Uh, anyway, you'll hear some of my, my learnings. Um, but he always had the attitude, grin and bear it. You know, like, did he want to take pain medicine? I see some people who can identify with this story. Uh, but then change, ha uh, change happened. When he woke up on, I remember very well, Friday, July 8th, he was in such excruciating pain, he couldn't move. You know, it, it's, we had to do something. Um, I've said he was 90, and we are, as been alluded to, we have a Medicare Advantage plan, part of a retirement benefits package. 
then, truthfully, I had studied it all that well. You know, with all the bells and whistles and all the marketing, this must be special. You know, I'm going to be well cared for when we have needs with it. Um, not necessarily so. So we arrived at the hospital, and I'm just going to focus on one part. But some things have stood out to my mind. Some of you have been through this, and you say, well, of course that's the way it is. Some of us are learning. But I find it quite interesting when you admit to the hospital, almost immediately they're planning for your discharge. And I'm going, but we haven't solved the problem. We haven't identified, well, yes, but when you, you will be going here. And so that my mind was just spinning. I'm supposed to be in working with seniors, and I'm, I'm blown away. Uh, okay. So we were told that Don would be discharged to a skilled nursing facility. Now, all kinds of, you know, everybody has their place, and skilled nursing definitely has its place, and it's a very viable option, but I did not consider it an option in our situation. Uh, yes, he needed a physical therapy, he needed help, but that was not the environment we anticipated he would be going to. Uh, he needed more intense rehabilitation therapy, a broader range, integrated services, and so on. But nevertheless, our Medicare Advantage plan made the decision, a decision made by someone who had never seen him or just had seen reports, uh, and he did not qualify for more, um, the more extensive care that would be provided through a rehabilitation center. Um, let's just say that didn't go over real well. Um, so then what I learned along the process is yes, as families, we have the right to appeal. You know, we, that's not where we wanted him to go. Um, so we requested authorization for him to be admitted to an inpatient rehabilitation facility so he could have the more in-depth therapy and so on. Um, and as we were talking about this, I kept hearing from social workers and liaison well, you'll probably be denied. Probably the word probably wasn't there. Well, you'll be denied, and then, I don't know, why is everybody so negative? <laughs> yes, okay, that's a good response. Uh, so I taught our Medicare Advantage plan, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this, and, and uh, why, and I was, it would take 72 hours for the appeal to be reviewed and you know, to respond to. Three days, that's a lot of time. And uh, I called, and we'll just say the call did not build any confidence in my, <laughs> uh, about my healthcare process. Uh, so our request for authorization for him to be admitted to an inpatient rehab facility was denied. Okay, on the level two, they already told me this is what's gonna happen. Then you go to level two, physician to physician, or uh, Professional to pro professional referral. So then something sent in by the doctor saying why he needed it. We were denied. Uh, third level of appeal. Family appeal. So my son prepared our appeal in full disclosure. My son does have a master's degree in healthcare administration and does work for a, a nonprofit hospital system. So I admit I had a nice advantage that someone who had information so he could write the letter, not only from the personal side, uh, from, uh, from my Don, who was the stepdad, but they're very close, and then he would also bring in the, the healthcare administration and business perspective. So he wrote his letter, denied, we were denied. And then when I learned, and I, I hope I'm right, but the, I've made good friends with some of these like liaisons and social workers trying to re research this. So if your family appeal is denied, it automatically goes to Maximus and everybody goes in there. And we were denied. So now, if you've been counting, we're up to several days, more days than we could stay in an acute care hospital. Uh, and so we had been coming up with our backup plan. Our backup plan was we wanted him in skilled rehabilitation. Uh, and so to make that happen, we had to resort to private pay, which is really disheartening after you've paid into Medicare 
there, but Joe would be sure he had the services he needed. Um, so that's let's see. the uh, oh, then when I asked the liaison, they're the ones you know between all these different groups. Well, what would have happened if I if he'd been on just plain original Medicare? Oh, he would have been admitted at the beginning. Now, I'm hastening to say I am not saying this to slam Medicare Advantage plans, but be informed and make decisions. Uh, I will admit we didn't go out and research these plans. Aha, uh -huh. this is offered to us. They send us all kinds of neat marching materials and all this, it must be great. Um, but at that time, I did not think it was great. Um, so, and I've had that story affirmed by many others in healthcare industry. But I share that today just as kind of a, a catalyst for you to be thinking. Um, but just to summarize, what really significant, significant learnings or affirmations, um, number one, know your plan and what is involved and what authorizations might be involved. And you can enlighten us and there's a way we can find that out. Know the differences between uh, inpatient rehab, rehabilitation, and skilled nursing facility. Uh, as I say, they, were, they all have their place, but what are your needs at this time? What would be best? Uh, inpatient rehab is a real short part. You are to be able to do 15 hours of physical therapy a week, and it's, you know, they're going to get you in and out. Skilled nursing is usually longer term. There'll be physical therapy. It's more limited. And there are all you know there are other comparisons. If anybody wants more specifics or anyway, let me. Um, we have a handout at my table back there. Um, I, this actually, I will say, it is a marketing piece for Encompass. So Encompass Health Rehabilitation Hospital. I know a lot of people from here use that down behind La Frontera. But anyway, this was one of their pieces comparing inpatient rehab and skilled nursing. So again, just as we prepare, it's nice to know. So when you should, we hope not have a crisis, and they tell you where you're going, you may agree, or you may want to bring in other information, but know the differences. Um, and then also, no, you do have the right to appeal. As we say, we do not agree with the decision, the direction we were given, we appealed. Yes, we were not successful, but at least no, you do have that right. <clears throat> and finally, I think most importantly, is that we all need to have a strong advocate for us. And not only an advocate, and this may be the same, but a real spokesperson. You know, I, in my case, our spokesperson was my son. He was willing to go confront the issues rather than just say, but that's not what I want. This is what I believe in, you know. And yes, John is 90. But does that mean if he has a good quality of life that he should be denied access to what would really help him better? So anyway, those are my learnings. But let me just give you a postscript. I know some of you are saying, so what happened? Long had six weeks, seven weeks. In that process, oh, I've seen way too many hospital rooms. Uh, he did end up having spine surgery. We did have it done in Dallas at Bayer Me uh, University Medical Center because um, we do have connections there. Uh, and then he did come back to Encompass Rehabilitation. And now, and, and all my our Medicare Advantage has paid for that, it was the original one, so maybe that's an isolated story, but in talking with lots of people, it, it, it does happen. And again, you may be on an absolutely perfect plan, and that's great, keep it going for you. Um, but I just wanted to raise that story. So now I want to go back and ask Bobby and then Steve. So is that, an isolated incident, or what can people do to be more prepared? No, that what you've come across, I've heard from hundreds of times, and it's always because of an advance plan. Uh, the pre-authorizations, 
to having to wait the 72 hours, all that stuff is, is somewhat gone. Um, you know, Medicare, there's maybe a very, very short list of procedures that have to have pre-authorization. Um, the ones that come to my mind, uh, they do want pre-authorization for Botox shots. Botox works great for folks with migraines, but it also makes the lines go away a little bit. So Medicare wants to make sure they're paying for a medical procedure. <coughs> plastic surgery, vinyl plastic, other have to have clearance. But for the most part, if you if you're, have Medicare as your primary insurance company, and your doctor says you need something, Medicare is going to cover it. Anything you want to add, Steve? Um, yeah, except that I'm going to actually play devil's advocate here for a minute. Because while the Advantage plans can cause problems, um, they can also save, save you in some cases. And the example that I would use, um, I had a friend of a friend of a friend who got referred to me in November of 2019. He had had a stroke in September of 2019. And God bless him, he only had original Medicare. He did not have a supplement, did not have an um, advantage plan, didn't have anything. And so by the time they got to me, they racked up about $20,000 in co-pays, deductibles, et cetera. Um, and basically after talking with them, and I'm just gonna be, I'm not even gonna bother hiding you know, detail or whatever, I put them into one of Scott and White's Advantage plans. Scott and White has a very expensive Advantage plan. Some of you are probably on it. It runs about 250 to 300 bucks a month. But it's the closest thing to a Medicare supplement that we've got in this area. And because it's an Advantage plan, it doesn't require any underwriting. See, that's the problem. If you're healthy, you can get a supplement. Because the Advantage plans are actually part of Medicare, even though they're administered by private companies, they don't ask any medical questions. So even if you're hopping around on one leg with stage three pancreatic cancer, you can still enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. And the important part is that it has cost controls. If I had talked to them a month, even, well, two months or even a month prior, they would not have had nearly those kind of bills. And the cost to be in a skilled nursing facility right now today is, is 194.50 this, this year, so it's 194.50 bucks, um, 194 dollars and 50 cents per day for days 21 through day 100. So if you talk about 30 days, let's just make it two 200 bucks a day for easy math. That's six thousand dollars. When I put them on that plan, and I'll explain that in a sec, it went to I think 15 dollars a day, which went from six thousand to, yeah, 450 bucks. Um, and so again, the Advantage plans absolutely can cause problems. And I'll be blunt, I personally think that Don was getting it um, discriminated against because he was 90. I think if he'd been 65 or 70, it probably wouldn't have happened that way. But because the statistics are that when you're 90, you're probably not as strong and fit and everything else as he was, I, I'm 90% confident if they faked you know, 20 years off of his age, he would have gotten the services that they were asking for without all the, the appeals. I have to tell a funny story here. When we were doing the family appeal, when my son is writing the letter, uh, he was convinced, was wanting to convince them that he was an active 90 year old. You know, we, we had these classes, this you know, idea of you're 90, you're decrepit. Uh, and so uh, he wanted to, he said, Mom, I want to send pictures in. So uh, we, we took a picture, we did have one of him when we were in private pay at rehab of him walking between the parallel bars. Yes, he's making progress, so we can see he's up and about. But then we also t uh, sent pictures from his 90th birthday in April. Uh, I was out at dinner at Gumbo's, it looked perfectly fine to me. And then we, and my cardinal will identify with this, we had a picture of him driving his tractor mower down this incline, and our we, part of our yard is elevated, so we built this incline. So, okay, he's out doing that, 
you know, he is active. He and Mike are on the mowing team together at church. <clears throat> we may be taking a break from that. Um, okay, I have a question. I want to give Bobby a chance and you may pick up on some of this other. In researching advantages and disadvantages and comparing Medicare and Medicare Advantage, one of the main things that pops up is with Medicare Advantage, you're working, you need to be within a network. I never read as much about this authorization, and one or both of you alluded to, yes, you do need authorization. And so I just find that interesting, because people say, oh, well, you know, you're in that network, but not only that, it's when do they deny you the opportunity to have the care? You want to pick up on that, Bobby? It's up to the advantage plan. It's up to that company, that private for-profit insurance company. I mean, it, it's like Steve pointed out, guys, it, this is really important to drive home. Advantage plans have their place, okay? I would much rather have my mom on an Advantage plan than just original Medicare without a supplement. And that's because of the cost. Advantage plans do cap your out-of-pocket expenses each year. There are some very nice things about Advantage plans now. But as Virginia's trying to get across in this meeting, it's very important that you understand your options when you choose it and what those consequences could lead to down the road if there are health conditions. Uh, well, I'll get to you in one sec. I'm gonna throw in one other thing because Virginia said it and I wanna hit it again. Do you remember when she said we had Don's surgery done up in Dallas because we've got connections? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna point out to y'all today, I know and like Virginia I probably, I don't actually, no, I don't see anybody in here that I could name on a first name basis. But if you call him, Texas Medicare shop, you know where they are, over there next to you know Social Security. If you go and say, hey, who's the guy that did that seminar with Virginia? They'll find him, I guarantee it. If you call Virginia and you say, hey, who's the guy that you know? She'll find me or she'll find him. You have connections to people that know this stuff. You may also have an agent that does your Medicare type stuff. That is important. It's really important because we know tricks. <laughs> I'm not lying. You know tricks. Okay, now give away all share. your secrets. I know you, we just discussed one but, uh, earlier. But. Well, I'm not sharing that one, but I'm just saying we know them. So when the proverbial poo hits the fan, call her. Call me, call him, call somebody that deals with this stuff on a regular basis every day because when you've seen thousands of cases, occasionally you're like, oh, problem solved. So, um, okay, I know we're going to have questions about Medicare and Medicare Advantage. We're going to come back in a minute because I, I want to also get into, and this is going to be more uh, Steve's discussion about. And you're going to hear the word, it depends. Long-term care insurance. How do we know what we have? How do we figure it out? Do we need it? What's, can you give us a Cliff Notes version? So, again, I'm going to say this is my opinion. Um, when I'm talking to somebody that's getting ready to retire, somewhere around 55 to 65, 70 ish as a general rule in Texas, for a married couple, it's different for single, if you've got assets less than about seven or 800,000, you can probably get away without having long-term care because there's some estate planning that can be done, there's some Medicaid planning that can be done, um, and long-term care is about preserving assets. If you've got a house and you're by yourself and you don't have anybody that you particularly want to leave that house to, whether it's kids, whether it's the home for wayward dogs, whether it's your church. Um, Long-term care doesn't matter much. But um, as soon as you get above that, we'll say five to $800,000 mark, if there are people that you want to protect, whether it's a spouse, whether it's passing what you worked for your entire life along to your kids, you know, whatever happens to be left, then yeah, long-term care matters. Once you get above 1.2, 1.5 billion in liquid assets, 401s, IRAs, bank accounts, brokers, that sort of thing, um, 
you can probably self-insure. Because again, here in Texas, there's a five-year look back, and if somebody's got $1.2 million, and they have to do self-pay on long-term care, let's just say it's $8,000 a month. <coughs> For easy math, we're gonna call it $100,000 a year to be in a skilled nursing facility. Even if you have to pay five years out of your own pocket, 1.2 minus 500 is $700,000. And when you talk to the right attorneys, right when this stuff starts happening, the attorneys do their magic, and yeah, you end up having to spend $500,000, but 700 of it goes along and stays in the estate, it's preserved. Um, and again, there may be some other ways to preserve above and beyond, but that's kind of a worst case scenario. So you can see why when I say, you know, there's this, this bracket, things have changed in the past 20 years. And the options that are available today in terms of Medicaid and being able to stay at home, it, it's, it's just different. And the long-term care options that are out there are significantly different today than they were even 10 years ago. So one of the things that we've done in the past is, and I'll just throw it out there, if my business partner's in Africa right now, sorry he's not here, um, many of you probably met Howard Polanski in the past, but if any of you have long-term care policies and you would like us to look at them, we can say, yeah, it's good, keep doing it. If you get a major rate hike, we can talk about, okay, maybe you wanna do this, maybe you wanna do that. We don't charge anything for that, it's just a community service thing we do, because again, it's a relationship building exercise, just like what Virginia's doing here with the education. So I'll, I'll just say that long-term care is important. There's different options that are out there, but like she said, it depends. So let me go by those little kind of vague, or hopefully other broad number scale you gave us. So if your assets are less than 7,000, what could they tell us again? So, so 500 to 700,000. You really probably don't need long-term care unless you are specifically trying to leave money, assets, whatever, to kids and or, or family or whatever. Um, or that way we're doctors or the home for wayward dogs, because dogs are important. Cats, maybe not so much, but. Oh, you're uh, in I'm stirring the pie. <laughs> don't, don't hate me, I've got three cats, so. Um, but part of the reason I'm ignoring property is many of you have probably heard of something called a ladybird deed. A ladybird deed is what's referred to as a transfer on death deed. And if you go talk to probably any elder law attorney in the area for about 500 bucks, they will help you get your deed taken over from a regular warranty deed, which is probably what you have, to a ladybird deed. And all a ladybird deed does is it says, whoever this beneficiary is, let's say Steve, he has a future interest in that property. And oh, quick disclaimer, not an attorney, not a CPA, nothing I'm saying is tax or legal advice, go talk to your advisor before, because I'm not licensed to practice law. But if you go talk to that attorney and you get this set up, whoever that beneficiary is has a future interest in the property, and all that does is it means when somebody passes away, the property goes to that person without going through probing. It's not part of your estate. And interestingly enough, when you talk about Medicaid in Texas, let's just say somebody goes in a skilled nursing facility, they've been there for two years, the state spent $200,000 on that skilled nursing, the person passes away. Well, you and I are all taxpayers. We're all paying for that. And that's okay. But. We've also said, yeah, hey, as taxpayers, we'd like to get as much of that money back as possible. Would you agree? And so the Medicaid estate recovery program says, after that person passes away, we, the state, can go to that person's estate and try and recover 
as much of that money that we spent on that person skilled nursing as possible. And so Merck, Medicaid Estate Recovery Program, goes to the estate and says, hey, we need $200,000 back, please. If there's not $200,000 or if there's various other exceptions or whatever else, they'll try and get what they can. But again, if the house, which is probably the significant asset, passes outside of probate, it's not part of the estate. There is no claim that can be made. And that's just one of a number of different things that can be done. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that I've got those brackets that I talk about. So again, 500 to 700,000 in money, IRA, 401, bank account, stocks, things that are, you know, even gold coins in your vault. Because um, I know a guy that's got about 250,000 gold and I'm not even gonna tell you what town he lives in, but it's kind of crazy to look at. Um, less than that, and you probably don't need to spend the one, two, three, four thousand dollars a year on long-term care. But above 1.2 million, you can probably get away with it because you can afford to have to spend some of that money, and it's a gamble. I mean, if you want long-term care, if you've got a history of Alzheimer's in your family like I do, yeah, maybe you want to buy it because you're pretty confident you're going to use it. So that's kind of the thoughts on long-term care. Um, and if you speak to many financial advisors, you'll hear similar type numbers. So the reason it comes into play is that we're not going to get into whole Medicaid and spin down. But if you want more, want more information about it, but it all does become very interrelated. Strategies for preserving wealth. Uh, well, uh, Will about the Prevera Bank couldn't be here today, but you know that's what their whole business is about. And we'll learn more from them in a seminar next year. Okay. Anything you want to add to that? That's not my specialty. Okay, okay that's specialty right. Medicare, but those are the same numbers I've heard, just like Steve talked about. But here, I, okay. So this one is for. We'll start with Steve on this one. Okay. So some of us are probably thinking, well, maybe I need to re-examine what I have. And you may be great, and that's absolutely wonderful. Some of you may be saying, maybe I need to make some kind of change. Can I change? Okay, we have a special time period coming up here. Um, Bobby, what, if we want to make a change, besides meeting with people who know what they're doing. Uh, what? Well, October 15th and December 7th. That's the magic window of time each calendar year that individuals are allowed to switch from original Medicare to an Advantage plan, from an Advantage plan to original Medicare, or to change their Advantage plan. Again, that's October 15th to December 7th. Any election you choose will take effect January 1st. It's called the annual election period. And that's the reason you're going to get lots of marketing materials um, to... TV commercials, Joe Namath will be back on there. No. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw out one other because this is the one that most people don't realize. As soon as somebody has spent a single day in a skilled nursing facility, so I'm going to use my dad as an example, had a stroke, hospital for about seven, eight, nine days, something like that, transferred from the hospital over to a skilled nursing facility. The second somebody is in a skilled nursing facility, that opens up what's called a SEP, a special enrollment period. <coughs> you can talk to Bobby, you can talk to me, you can talk to your agent, whatever. And if you're not necessarily on a plan like Virginia, let's just say you're on United Healthcare. And United Healthcare is giving you grief on prior authorizations. If we think Humana will be a little more forgiving or work with you, yeah, you might have to do some private pay between now and the end of the month, but let's just say, in my dad's case, it happened August 17th. August 18th, he's in a skilled nursing facility. <clears throat> I'm immediately like, okay, I'm unhappy with this. I know we're gonna have a problem with this because we weren't planning on this. And so we can transfer somebody either from their existing Advantage plan over to a different one. We can do this, I can do this, or, we can get them off of um, an Advantage plan altogether and back on original Medicare just by writing them a prescription drug plan instead. 
And that's one of the secrets that very few people realize. Now, the downside to doing that is that you now have no cap. And going back to talk about my guy who had the stroke, you could be on the hook for 10, 20,000 in co-pays and deductibles. But if you're okay with that, and if that's how you're going to get the care that you need to get better, it can be done. And I think, yeah, I just want to wrap up this part and we're open for questions about get the level of care. That's what we're really about, you know, and you may have to be outspoken to get the level of care or resort to other means, try to pay, to get the level of care. But that, that's what we're really, I think, trying to help people be aware of. Okay. Let's open it up for questions from the floor. Who has questions for us? Yes. Well, back to your story about your friend that uh, built up exorbitant costs. Uh, when you say Medicare, that's Medicare that's being paid out of Social Security first, right? Okay, let me see. Can I? So, so to repeat the question, let me make sure I understand it. Um, she asked about Medicare that's being paid out of Social Security. And so for most people, if you're drawing Social Security, Medicare gets paid for from Social Security, and that is original Medicare parts A and B. And yes, that's what he was on. So he did not have a Medicare supplement plan? Correct. So he did he not did have not. Okay. either a Medicare supplement, nor was he on a Medicare Advantage plan. Gotcha. In fact, pardon my French, it was kind of a goofball. Um, not the word I was going to use, but um, change my mind. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. it's. Uh, this is being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> That's what um, he didn't even have a prescription drug plan. Um, and he was like, Medicare is good enough. That was his, his feeling. And Medicare is good enough if you don't have a problem. But today's topic is crisis. Okay, so. Um uh, brain just went. <laughs> okay, well, you're thinking about that. I'm going to jump back, and both of you, especially for Bobby right now, about we, you know, we talked about Medicare. We made just a mention of Medicare supplement or GAB prescription. Can you, how do, we, are those things we add on, or, or how do we know? Well, it, it, either way, once you're 65 and on Medicare, you have to have some type of Credible drug coverage. If you're a veteran and you receive your prescriptions through the VA, that's considered credible coverage. You don't have to have a Part D. But if you don't have any other type of credible coverage, when you start Medicare, you have to start Part D, or you can be, you will be penalized, and there will be delays in getting it started down the road when you need it. So that's always important to know that that is a component of Medicare you have to have is that drug component, whether it's through a Part D standalone plan or through an advantage plan. And it's, you have to pay for it. If it's through an advantage plan, a lot of those come with the zero dollar monthly premiums. Okay, let me skip over here to Mike and, and I'll put back this bit. Mike? Um, in an advantage plan, our advantage plan, we have a PPO endorsement or whatever. Can you mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit? PPO He's asking about in the Medicare Advantage plans, you'll see different, I guess, I don't know, configurations is the right word, but PPO we often see. What does that mean? So within the Medicare Advantage world, there's typically two different ways to do that. One is to have an HMO. When you're in an HMO, you must go to in-network doctors or you have zero coverage except in an emergency. HMOs typically have stronger additional benefits like the dental, vision, and hearing, transportation of the doctors, over-the-counter benefits. The other type, particularly of, a, of an Advantage plan, is called a PPO. When you're on a PPO, you are allowed to go to out-of-network doctors. You're gonna have a higher cost share, and it's also gonna increase your maximum out-of-pocket for the year, but you are allowed to go to out-of-network doctors. Does that answer your question? Yes, but, an example would be, could Don, if they had PPO endorsement on their advantage, we would, did. That, would that help your situation? The, the, the kicker is, you got to get the doctor to say, yeah, we'll take it. And yeah. so, mm -hmm. if you've got a PPO, 
and you try and go down to MD Anderson, you might, maybe, possibly, small chance, make it work. Um, HMO is not going to happen, period, in the story. Um, Ours was a, it, it is PPO. It, it still has to have that authorization. And yes, he's not even told me about it. He, mm -hmm. But well, I'm not willing to give up because of it. But anyway, so. Did I see him? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Do you want some clarification on when we, well, as definite as we can be, your, I think your guidelines for when we need long-term care insurance. So just to reiterate, in terms of when you need or don't need long-term care, and I can I can touch on this with you after, um, okay. you know, whatever. Um, it, it's it's all about protecting assets, and the numbers that I was quoting were around less than five to seven hundred thousand dollars. I rarely write. If somebody really wants it. Yeah, I'm going to do what they want because at the end of the day, my job is to educate and enroll people in what it is they need. Um, but, you know, I've got my criteria that are what I tend to explain to people. And once I explain why, they're like, okay, that makes sense. You're right. Um, and so there's a lot of different strategies to dealing with all of this stuff. Some of it's insurance, some of it's savings, some of it's having kids um, because. Kids that take care of you are the best. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll so talk about that with you. Yeah, you can talk to him. That's a good point. Specific questions about your situation, speak with our panelists afterwards. But just that uh, five to 7,000 there, you may not need it. You, I think about seven to 8,000 recommendations. $800,000 Yeah, 500, $800,000 assets. It would be advantageous to be on long-term care. About that, if you want to self-insure, that's a possibility, and that's where you, you look at your whole package and all. Okay, uh, all right, uh, Cornelia. I'm curious, I have a supplemental with Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, including drug card. Uh, you, you get the, you, you offer the um, advantage. Do you have a choice to, 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 when you retire, do you have a choice of whether you get a supplement or whether you do uh, advantage, or do they just offer one thing? You, you have that choice every year. She asked you about that okay, blue cards for the shield, and you, when, do you, uh, when you when you retire, and, and you, you've got the, the uh, advantage plan. Would you have a chance to have a get a supplemental and have original um, Medicare with a supplemental, or were you just off? Are you plan? asking me? Well, I'm just saying. Generally, sure, she would she part. would have had the option to go with original. Yeah, she could have dropped her retirement yeah. plan. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she I would just be just, forfeiting that part. She could have denied her retirement coverage, gone with the original Medicare and a supplement, but then she's putting the bill for it. Well, that's what I'm, I, I wasn't sure how people Yeah, you can do that sure. and some of it. The, the best retirement plans are the ones that give you like an allowance. Then you can just go out and get a supplement off the open market. Typically, you do have to purchase your drug plan through the retirement program to get that benefit but you can go on the open market and get a supplement that's gonna save you a lot of money. It doesn't get any simpler. I mean, it doesn't get easier, you know, there are all these ins and outs and depends and so on. Other questions, Mary. Um, Virginia, back to your story. Ultimately, did your Advantage plan pay for his surgery, but not the rehab that you had hoped for? Well, okay, and that's fair, uh, yes. Uh, they did pay for the surgery. And they paid for the rehab after the surgery. So in a way, you say, well, you're just picking out one little small part. The reason I still feel so strongly about that is what does it represent? And it represents you giving up your freedom for what you want to provide. Now, I, and I say, you know, yes, they did come through. But in the meantime, um, you know, we were denied what would it would have been the best quality of service had we not just taken it upon ourselves to do that. So, uh, follow up question with an advantage plan. The, you were saying the group ad, uh, advantage plans sometimes have better overall coverage. How does how does a group advantage plan compare to regular original Medicare with a supplement? So she's asking about the, the um, mention was made that group advantage plans. 
are different than individual or I mean within the same company and how does that compare and anyway. So at the end of the day, any advantage plan is going to have more restrictions than original Medicare, period, end of story. Because you'll hear the term managed care. An insurance company is in business to make money. They don't love you. They're in it for the money. And part of the way they make money, actually, is by having better outcomes. And so that's one of the reasons that you'll see some of the things that the, the Advantage plans want you to do. If any of you have changed Advantage plans in the past probably three years, um, I'm going blank, what's the, the new person thing that came in this week? The wellness check? Uh, no, it's just the energy. So, oh. so they're, they're, making, they're, they're having like a entrance interview now where they're asking, hey, are you depressed? Do you have any problems getting up and walking? And basically, they're looking for special needs that they can potentially address. Um, and it's because the insurance companies get paid based on star ratings, there's five stars. If you've got a five star plan, that insurance company is getting paid, paid a lot of money for every person they've got. Four stars, less money, three stars, even less money. Two stars, they're probably getting ready to close that plan. Uh, okay, one thing that brings me to, I see part of the, in the attraction, when we're talking about quality of health care, absolutely right, from what I understand as a consumer. The Medicare Advantage plan, if you take advantage of all of their bells and whistles, and you have those appointments with these people, and you do all that planning, and that's how many of us are in silver sneakers as part of our, you know, so it's, the point of keeping us healthy, and you know, is fantastic. Because some of us still worry what happens when the healthcare crisis occurs. So, okay, uh, Lou. Uh, <clears throat> there's two things. One is, insurance companies are practicing medicine without a license. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, and, and the second thing is. If oh, you miss Lou's statement, insurance companies are practicing medicine without a license. That's his take on it, and we hear a lot of echoes. So, uh, okay, yes? And secondly, he's right. They don't love you. Uh, they like you when you're paying them, but they hate you when they're paying you. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that's automatic. But I will tell you, he said a while ago that Medicare doesn't deny you. I was denied by Medicare. I have Medicare plus a supplement when I had a ladder accident. Two years, three years, two years ago, had four back surgeries, and Medicare denied me going to a rehab hospital. Medicare did. Hmm. Medicare did. So there's no silver bullet. Yeah. Um, I've heard that once or twice where there have been those sort of issues. Um, but yeah, again, if you talk about it on a relative sense, original Medicare is going to. You have very, very, very little management. They've got policies in place. The providers, as a general rule, know those policies and they know how to navigate the system. And you're not dependent on the whims of a human being who's reviewing your case or some insurance company's little programmatic thing that says, okay, we've got a 90-year-old male who's got a bum back. Are we gonna pay for this or are we not gonna pay for this? Statistics say this guy's got a 5% chance of getting better. Just because we're looking at it as a statistic. We're not looking at it as an individual. So does that does that make sense that the individual is different than the statistics? And that's what you have to have an advocate and a spokesperson for. Okay, other questions, Kathy. In John's case, would long-term care have picked up the skin merchant? I don't know, I didn't even go there. I just didn't want to be part of it. I... Yes, um, with long-term care, there's frequently what's called an elimination period. It's typically zero, 30, 60, or 90 days, with 90 days being the most common. So in his case, if he'd had a normal long-term care with a 90-day elimination, elimination period, the answer is no. But if he had a zero-day policy and he'd gone over for, you know, the 
Actually, you know, maybe not, because it was that was inpatient hospital, right? Inpatient rehab. No, inpatient rehab would not have been covered. Long but I think care. she's asking if we had gone to skilled nursing. She was asking in our situation. If we had gone to skilled nursing, what are, but we don't have long-term care insurance, so. Yeah, but, but if you did. If we did. It still wouldn't have helped because, um, you know, it was inpatient rehab and most long-term. But if we hadn't done that, if we had done what they wanted. Well, yeah, if you just gone to skilled nursing, if insurance hadn't paid for it, you know, again, typically. If we had skilled nursing, insurance would pay for parts of it or whatever. Yeah, so Medicare typically will cover the first 20 days of skilled nursing after a hospital stay, three midnights uh, of hospital, 100%. After that first 20 days, you've got another 80 days of coverage, but you've got to co-pay with that, which I believe 194.50 this year. So per day. Per day. And so that's one of the reasons you have those Medicare supplements is because the Medicare supplement will cover that day 20 through day 80, assuming it's the right one. But, you know, I'm not gonna get into all the different plans and that sort of thing. But again, um, you know, if you're in the hospital, 1565 this year? 1565 if you go in the hospital for one day. Now, if you're in for 30 days, it's still that same amount because that deductible covers the entire first 60 days. So it's kind of expensive if you're only in for one day, but it's not bad if you're in for you know 30 or 40 or 50. Um, and again, that's why the insurances exist, because with an Advantage plan, they're tinkering with those numbers. You know, an Advantage plan typically is 250, maybe $300 a day for the first five to six days. So in my dad's case, he was on an Advantage plan. He had, I think, eight days in the hospital but he capped out and the total bill is, I think it came as, I think he was $300 a day for six days. So his total bill was $1,800 for that hospital stay. If he'd been on original Medicare, it only would have been the 1565. So we ended up paying more because he was on an advantage plan. But again, there's some differences. I, I'm not gonna dig into them any deeper, but, um, it, it's just like anything else. If you take away some here, you probably get a little extra over here. And you just gotta figure out what makes the most sense. Okay, let's, uh, Chris. I'm just wondering, do you recommend that we come just for, uh, you know, I've been on Medicare for too many years to remember. I have never checked you now at the annual election period. Has something changed? Is it beneficial for me so to me come? Okay, forward? her question was, yes. should, would it be uh, beneficial if she's been on, you were on original Medicare, and you, you continued on it, it's fine. My circumstances, and I'm just wondering, should she have it checked out? So that's a good question. And meaning, no, and especially if you're going to do it, be aware that I, it's even on your own handout today, the enrollment period. But so should she come sure, get she's information? She's on original Medicare and a Medicare yeah, supplement plan. I'm on Tricare for life. Okay, you, you don't need to check anything. Yeah, you're sure. a different. Yeah, okay. You don't touch a thing. No, it's you've got Medicare, okay. you've got Tricare, you've got your drug coverage through your Tricare. No, Thank I'm you for your fine. service and your spousal service. Yeah, Yay, somebody know. got it. Sounds good. Let's <laughs> okay. Uh, so just for folks to, to know, TRICARE is when someone is retired from the military. Yeah. So that's a very, very strong coverage. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And back to the Medicare enrollment uh, for the supplements. Mm -hmm. Can you change your Medicare supplement anytime, or does that apply also to that? October, December. Awesome question. So you can change your Medicare supplement plan any time of the year you want. Okay. There's never a special window of time that you change your Medicare supplement. But your health will determine your options. If you've had the same Medicare supplement company for more than three years, I strongly encourage you, if not through one of us, through an, another agent, make sure they're independent, to shop that plan. You are more than likely overpaying if you've been on that plan for over three years because you've had rate increases. Your health will determine your options, 
but a lot of times you're going to be able to save money. Well, I found that also when you start with the Medicare supplement, if you're on like the original like F plan, which you can start dropping down your coverage and that will adjust the payment right. considerably. And 90% or even more, plan G is going to be the one to replace it with and it's a much better value. Yeah. So I know you're thinking, my gosh, what are all, what's this alphabet soup here? Uh, just go speak to them at the tables and get more information. So I know we're confusing you, but sometimes I that confuse you. So, well, I need to go get more information. So, um, okay. Um, let, yes. Is there options for military people that didn't retire but served, say, four years along this? Military people did not retire from the military but served, say, four years. Any special programs? Short version, no. Um, now, there may be some exceptions when you hit a 100% disability rating, um, but yeah, pretty much if you did not get to a full 20 years, if you don't have a military retirement with pension, um, you, as a general rule, are not eligible for TRICARE for life. To add to that, if I may, if you have VA benefits, where you're able to get your prescriptions filled through the VA, the benefit you have is you do not have to have a Part D, and there's no penalty. And there are certain Advantage plans that do not have the drug component included, and you can sign up for those, and sometimes they put money back in your Social Security check because they don't have to have that drug component because you're able to get your prescriptions filled through the VA. Okay. So I'm going to ask him a question because I, I generally want to hear his opinion since we're, we're, we're going there. Um, there are people that are eligible for TRICARE for life, and so they've got insurance through, through that. Um, within our industry, there are some people that say those people can get what's called a give back plan because right now today, most of you are paying about $170.10 for your Part B. And I'm sure you heard Joe on TV say, hey, there's plans out there that will pay for your Part B. Um, and so what's your opinion about combining a give back plan or one of these type plans with TRICARE? It, it works. It, it, it takes a little bit of finagling. It's going to take a little bit of extra effort on your part. But there's a one plan that sticks out to me. It's called an honor plan. It's specifically designed for veterans. And it puts, if I remember right, $50 a month back in your social security check, has all these great dental vision and hearing benefits, over-the-counter benefits, but it, again, does not have a drug component. So somebody that has TRICARE can enroll in that plan because they don't need to have drug coverage. It's a PPO, they can go in and out of the network, the Advantage plan pays its part, TRICARE pays its part. That's the tricky part. Sometimes doctors accept the Advantage plan, they don't accept TRICARE. So then you're having to file the claim with TRICARE on your own. But they if you don't have TRICARE, if you weren't in the military, don't worry about it, Marianne. It's okay. You can eliminate that discussion. <laughs> but, you know, as, as somebody whose entire family is military, I mean, every man in my family for the past four generations has been military. Um, it is something I wanted to mention for those of you who either served or who are spouses of someone who served, because sometimes $600 a year can really make a difference. Okay, I think I saw, yes, back there. I have a question for Steve, it's just a clarification. You, a while back, said as soon as someone goes into a skilled nursing facility, a three-letter acronym, acronym you use goes into effect. I just need those three letters because I can look it up on my own. It's SEP, Sierra Echo Papa. I it stands guessed. for Special Enrollment Period. S or CEP? Um, S, as in Sam. S, okay. Good. Special, okay, got it. Thank you, that's all I yes, need. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Before we have people's heads spinning anymore, take a deep breath. Know there are people to help you, but be prepared. That's what we would say. I want to thank our panelists for confusing us, <laughs> making us aware. And I do appreciate you taking time to be here and, and will encourage you. We're not finished yet, but you know, when they'll be at their tables over there.
there so you can get more specifics. Um, I do want to uh, call to your attention our uh, action steps to review your health care policies. Uh, schedule an appointment with a professional to make sure you have what you need and what you think you have and what you have might be somewhere near the same. Um, Note the enrollment period. And think about who will be your advocate, who will be your spokesperson. And, and it's really important that they have information and know where, what you're about and what your wishes are. Um, and then, of course, register for upcoming seminars. I want to also call to your attention uh, our Downsizing Club. We have several people here. Okay, if you're in Downsizing Club, there's three, four. We have another person joining, but they had to leave. I just want, we're going to do kind of a special event. Uh, Downsizing Club meets the first Thursday of each month. We meet over at First Presbyterian. And the purpose of Downsizing Club is a support group. Um, now, we don't go into counseling, but we do share stories and set goals. And we have some great storytellers in the group that make it uh, fun. Uh, but, and Brielle and I are the co-facilitators, and our goal is just to help people wherever you might be in that process. For some well, I'm, I'm, I'm planning on downsizing maybe two or three years. Great, come join us. You know, and we try to get, it's not all just about going through the clutter. We, we deal with that. But, you know, learning more just about the whole downsizing process, being prepared. I had a call from someone this morning helping someone. You know, this lady was determined she could do everything on her own. And I think the story is now she has her house under contract, but she's not prepared just getting rid of the stuff. She doesn't have a plan, a team. You don't, you need to plan early. So if you're, be sure to, I'll hear where my table visit with me about downsizing club, you'll be getting some more information. We have a little summary here, um, but it's truly uh, solving the puzzle one piece at a time understanding move management, the move process, understanding liquidation, getting rid of the stuff you no longer need, what's important about property preparation. Um, there is a small fee for that. You can visit with me about it, but uh, I just want to, it's a new year since I come from the academic world, and it's a good time to be thinking about, well, I might be selling next year, or maybe not. But anyway, if you want to join us, and be sure to ask me for more information. Uh, our next seminar is going to be about um, navigating senior living options. And so you say, oh, I know all about that, and that's great, but you can always come and join us. You know, have, you know, are we clear? What is, and now if you see, we've mentioned it several times, they couldn't be here today, but North Star is a 55 plus community. That's kind of a new, they're becoming more prominent in our area. So we have 55 plus uh, uh, active adults, more apartment settings as opposed to home ownership. So that's a whole area of independent living, assisted living. Uh, we usually don't deal that much with memory care or skilled nursing. We deal with the ones where we make more active choices. Although after all of my uh, encounters this month, we may be dealing more with uh, skilled nursing in the future just so people understand that all of that. Um, so all of that, we invite you to sign up for a seminar, bring your friends. We, we're going to start having a competition to see who brings the biggest tribe with the, the biggest supporters. Uh, Lori Plank is leading, but uh, there's room for other people to join us. I know some of you have invited friends to, to join. Um, okay, so leave your yellow feedback form in the basket or we just have one of the water bottles and stop at the resource tables to visit with people, register for the seminar, and enjoy our cooling weather, we think. We hope that continues. And look forward to seeing you October 13th. Thanks.